I'm Jamie Gorman, the host of Be Better at Business TV, and I'm here this morning with Charlene Hassan Brown. And Charlene is the CEO of CASA, Children Intervention Services for Prince William, Fauquier, Rappahannock counties. That's right. right. Great. Yes. This morning we're going to be discussing managing it, how to successfully manage a nonprofit, and then we'll also talk a little bit about what CASA does as well. Good morning, Charlene. Good morning, and thank you for having me. You're welcome. So. You know, I've followed CASA for a couple years now, and I know that you're growing. You've expanded now into Fauquier, Rappahannock counties. Uh, we were talking before the show just the number of kids that that are uh, are coming in now. Um, you've kind of expanded and you've grown. What what kind of advice can you give to those not for profits that are kind of facing that? They're kind of at that threshold where they need to make some changes, make need to do some things. What kind of tips can you give them for how to get through that and break that barrier and what they need to do to expand and grow the not-for-profit? Well, I can tell you that as um, when, this, when we first came into this what they call recession time, I've been with CASA since 1994. I've seen recession periods of time before. I haven't lived through one that's this long. Right. And so early on the tendency was to say, well, we can weather this storm, but when the storm keeps coming and coming right, and coming, right, right. you reach a place where you almost want to panic about it. You know, what do I do or do I just stop giving my services? You know, we've been at that critical juncture because we are growing. Um, I shared with you earlier that this year at the half year mark, the fiscal year, half year, we were 40% up in our cases of abused wow. children. And we only get the worst cases. We get the ones that come to court. Well, now it's lessened a little bit. We're just 32% up over last year. But I can tell you that finding that much more money right. um, in a short period of time so that we can continue saying to the court, yes, we'll take those children. I don't want to turn one away. Right. I don't want to turn every single child deserves to have that extra person who's that eyes and ears that will help them to get through not only the trauma, but have a better life. And I don't want to turn one child right. away. So we keep trying to be creative about the way that we can <laughs> find those dollars. Right. And one thing you mentioned there, really, you're talking about your cash flow, right? I mean, that's your cash flow. And just like a business, you, growth is all about managing that cash flow, right? I mean, yes. you've got to be thinking when you're fundraising, it's not just about how do I cover my costs now. Mm -hmm. It's how do I fund so that if we have a 10%, 20%, 30% uptick in this need, how am I going to take that as well? Well, and we, uh, our organization is under the Department of Criminal Justice Services. Our right and privilege to work with children is in the Code of Virginia. Okay. Under the Department of Criminal Justice Services, they have regulations for us, and those regulations tell me, as the CEO, that I must have a full-time supervisor for every 30 volunteers, and that okay. my volunteers can only work with three children or two sibling groups. So as these cases come in, it is ticking in my head, I've got to have another staff. Right. And right now in my tiny office, because I don't want to put the money toward a facility, we've got space for two people in our conference room, we've got two people in what used to be our storage room, we've got two people in a tiny office, wow. so we really try to aim those resources at the children to make sure that we can grow. This year, by the end of this fiscal year, we hope to have 150 advocates in place. And with our expansion, we need more in Fauquier and Rappahannock. Our expansion actually included Loudoun County because it's a judicial district. The right. three counties okay. are a judicial district, but we're not there yet. Right. I, I have to get, get us in firm condition before we can okay. move along here. But every child deserves to have a CASA, so it's my greatest goal and effort to make sure um, that I can come to the community in such a way that they can understand we need them right. to make it possible for these children to come out of that abusive situation and to have a better life. Right, great. So uh, just a question that kind of came to, came to mind is, I mean, you said you started in 1994, and at that time you were probably one of the uh, staff, you were helping the children, you kind of joined with that aspect and that passion. Now clearly you're, you must be spending much less time specifically with the children. You've transitioned from you know, being and doing that part of, of what you love and got you into it, now to managing those folks. How have you handled that transition from you know, being on the ground doing the things to now managing that aspect of it and do you miss it? Well, first of all, I'm a foster adopt kid. Okay. So even before I started working with CASA, I had a passion for the children. I also had a little bit of an inkling. My situation was not nearly like some of the children that we work with. 
um, but an inkling of, of the need that they have. Right. And um, so, so I brought that to becoming an advocate in the very first class in okay. 1994 that was trained. Moving along, as the directors were moving along, I came in as a program director and began to work with training, recruiting and training the volunteers and working with the children still. When the day came that I had to transition from having that kind of contact to really primarily focusing on administration, grant writing, right. and raising money, I, I was very troubled by okay. it. And I don't know where the point was or the flipping place was when I understood that I was going to have to be the, wing, the wind beneath those wings, right. that I could no longer be the wings. And so I have concentrated my efforts. I do miss it. I, of course, we hear about the cases all the time. We have that discussion and, and how cases are going. But I know that if I don't continue day after day after day to find the resources, and whether that's because people donate resources to us or funds to us or volunteer their time, if I don't keep making that happen, right. then the children won't continue to receive help. So it wasn't an easy transition, <laughs> but I made it. And once again, that's another, and I think something that goes to the growth of a not-for-profit not is that just like a business, the CEO needs to step out of the day-to-day -day and manage the day-to-day -day and let the other folks in, in kind of delegate that and be able to let certain things go. Otherwise, you kind of hit that plateau and you're not getting any bigger. So I like you, you saw that and saw that, hey, now by doing this, I'm able to help more and I'm able to do more by doing that. And it's important to keep your vision out in front of you, not just your mission, but your vision, to know that what you are doing now is helping in this way, but there right. is another way that you can help more fully. And if you keep your eye on the vision and you keep moving toward that, I believe both your goal and your, your mission and your vision must be a goal all the time in front right. of you and that one shouldn't be sacrificed to the other. And it's quite a dance to do, but that's really where your board comes in right. to help you with that. That's great. Uh, well, I, and that, I'm glad you brought up the board. What, how important is it to have a good board of directors and what types of things do you look at when you're, when you're trying to bring people onto the board? Well, our board is a working board, and probably because of that, maybe a little less desirable place to sit unless okay. you're really <laughs> highly motivated. Um, some years ago, our board members voted that every board member who came on would sign a commitment to bring some money to CASA each year. In fact, the commitment level was $10,000 each year that they were help welcome to write the check out right. themselves, but otherwise they would help to generate that money because the board at that time felt that if you really didn't have a committed uh, board member, that they really didn't put a piece of skin in the game, so to right. speak that um, they would be less valuable to the organization overall. The mission of the organization, the vision of the organization, working together toward a goal. So we have a very active board, and it's true, like in any situation, that you always have those people who are more active than others. Right. But when you've got that as part of your board culture, then the people who don't quite come up very quickly are uncomfortable. Yeah, they're not comfortable um, But the board is the only way that you can further your vision. Each one of those people represent further connections, um, further ability to uh, not only uh, be successful with your mission, but to move toward your vision. Okay. And so having the appropriate board members is essential. Um, I don't know what I would do without right. my, my wonderful board members. Some are more wonderful than others. Um, <laughs> through 20 That's probably not a bad <laughs> thing, right? <laughs> through 20 years, you've seen yeah. it all. But, um, but I couldn't possibly do what I do without the board. That's great. Well, uh, Be Better Business TV is live, and so uh, we can take questions from the audience. So, Jessica, do we have uh, questions from the audience? Sure, we've got one. Um, what have been your most successful fundraising events? Okay, so we've talked a little bit about fundraising. We're going to talk about more specifically your, your, what you have coming up. But what have in the past have been some of the categories of the best fundraisers you've done? Let me start by saying you first need to understand why people support. Okay. One of those is because it's a cause that they really, it, it personally touches them and, them and impacts them. Or because you happen to be in their face at a given time right. and they give you money. The other reason that they um, give to you is because, corporately especially, or businesses, it's community goodwill. So okay. they choose a charity that can be a part of their heart and their promise, but, but they want to do, they, they're going to give it to someone and you're there and that's for goodwill in the community okay. and to be a part of uh, be a good citizens 
Then the third reason that they donate to you is because what you do is unique and uh, fun and they just want to be entertained. And oh, by the way, great cause too. Right. So I have kind of looked through the years at trying to be unique about what we do so that we aren't just another um, particular type of event that okay. most people have. You know, I, I, there's nothing wrong with them and they certainly bring a lot of money, you know, the running and the golf things. Um, but I wanted our events to be unique enough that no one else was doing it. And right. so even if, you know, um, there were a lot of other events going on, they would want to come to ours too right. because it's a lot of fun. Okay. So I think, um, I think just our most fun events, right. our Ladies' Night Out with Santa that we have now um, I around Christmas time in December, um, turned out to be just a fantastic event that I don't want to tell everybody about. It's women only, <laughs> except for the elves. Um, this month is National Child Abuse Prevention Month, the month of April. Okay. Um, and so we have a blue ribbon uh, campaign going on throughout the um, county and uh, counties that we serve um, for those businesses. And if you if you come into one of those businesses and you see that they're a blue ribbon business, we hope that you will make a donation to Casa during this month. Because frankly, I said this to you before we started today, we need a miracle right. with 32 percent increase in kids coming in and our money literally coming only from donations. We're looking for a miracle. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Charlene Hassan Brown, the CEO of CASA Children Intervention Services for Prince William, Fauquier, Rappahannock counties for joining us this morning. I uh, really appreciate your time. I greatly appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Jamie Gorman, the host of Be Better at Business TV, and I hope that you can use this to help yourself be better at business.